uh, yeah, this is a uh, memorial to my brother, Todd Locke. Um, he was born uh, July 8th, 1965, and he died at the age of 23 in July 20th, 1988. Uh, he had uh, Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Um, Duchenne is one of the the uh, numerous neuromuscular diseases um, and in this memorial uh, you're not only going to see pictures of him but interviews um, by uh, some news anchors from KSFY um, TV in Sioux Falls, South Dakota um, I believe their names were Mark Overton I'm not too sure about Mark's last name and, and Susan McGowan um, and uh, I'm gonna blend in some pictures of our family uh, that's obviously Todd to the far left and my mother right next to him and me in the glasses in the middle and uh, my sister Allison uh, who's now Allison Robar um, and uh, my father, uh, Reverend Leland Locke. There might also be some pictures of my grandparents too. Uh, Leland P. Locke on the far left there and uh, um, Catherine Locke or, or Happy as uh, everybody called her uh, in between my mom and dad there. Yeah, I'll start off with a letter written by uh, that Todd reads. Dear Mark, when I was really young, I had no idea what muscular dystrophy was or what it could do to a person. When I was told about having it, I was still walking at the time. I really did not take it too seriously, but I knew there was something different because I fell down a lot. Mom wanted me to wear a helmet because I always bumped my head. I thought it was a stupid idea. I didn't want to wear one while I was outside playing. It also, I also got tired more easily, especially by the time I was eight or nine. I couldn't get into sports like my friends, which was terribly frustrating. The first time I had to use a wheelchair was when my family and I went to Disney World for a vacation. There was a lot of walking involved. I started getting very tired, so my parents decided maybe I should rent a chair just to give me a rest. It upset me seeing other people walking around without any help. It made me feel like I was in another world because it seemed like I was the only one in a wheelchair. Two years later, I had to use one almost all the time. I could stand, but that was all. A couple of months later, I couldn't even do that. I remember going to camp for the first time. It was very, I was very scared. It was the first time away from home on my own. I really wasn't sure what to think when I saw other people with the same type of, of problem. That was when I was still walking. When I was first put into my chair, I remember wanting to get out of it and play with my friends, which was almost impossible. I was mad at everything, even my family. I felt like getting up and hitting something. There was also a lot of physical pain along with the bitterness. During my middle teens, I got to the point where I really didn't give a damn about what would happen to me. Part of it was because I had so many friends that died, and I was wondering if I would be the next to go. Also because my back became crooked, and I felt like God just didn't care. I felt like I was in a world by myself, because other people my age, we're always going out with friends and family. It was, it just didn't seem fair. It made me mad. 
I felt left out. There was a point during this time when I didn't think I'd lived past 20. Lately, things have changed in the way I feel about muscular dystrophy. I am not sure why, if it was a church, family, or friends. I'm just glad God gave me a second chance. I went to the children's clinic in Minneapolis to see if I could have a rod put in my back to keep it straight. During the examina examination, x-rays showed the curvature of my spine just missing my lungs by a couple of inches. Any further up and it would have killed me. That made me feel like God did care. Now I don't mind being in a wheelchair. I just want to help other people understand what I went through and what I'm sure other handicapped people have gone through too. I feel like I was put on this planet for something. I just haven't figured out what that is. There are still, there are still times that I wish I didn't have muscular dystrophy. And I will probably feel that way until I die. But life has been a lot more enjoyable. I am graduating and even talking about college, which I never thought I could do. The only thing that I really get depressed about now is how hard it is to meet friends that are not handicapped even harder to meet girls. My advice to people, not just with MD, is not to give up, however hard it gets. Take life one step at a time. Your friend, Todd Locke. It's a pretty nice letter. Mm-hmm. In this next clip, uh, Susan McGowan interviews myself and Todd at Sherman Park in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. How do you feel uh, about having a loved one with muscular dystrophy? It's, Maybe uh, I shouldn't say loved one. <laughs> a brother. <laughs> Someone you're stuck with. <laughs> Kind of tears away at me. Yeah. It's been a long, slow tear, too. But, um, it's hard to describe. I like to see it so uh, he's able to run and walk and play again and be able to do the things that that I've been able to do. Be able to get a job and live like a normal person instead of being confined the way that he is. Do you remember when you could play? It was a long time ago. I mean, it was pretty young back then. Yeah. Very young. Do you remember it, Tom? Yeah. I remember observing one year when we were watching the kids go to camp, and it was time for Todd to get on the bus. And it was almost as though Todd didn't want anyone else to get him on the bus. Yeah. I mean, and he waited, you know, for you, and I know you were his attendant, but I observed that relationship then. Do you, do you carry that home, have that same feeling about each other? Uh, <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> really? We've had our fights just like yeah. any other brothers do. But uh, we get along pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say pretty darn well. <laughs> Considering. We managed to have our fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about Troy, Todd? Just having him as a brother. I don't know. Most brothers won't admit that. It's not my good looks. <laughs> You're what? Well, friends, like my mom said. Uh... Well, I wouldn't have an electric wheelchair for one thing if it wasn't for them. And I can get around a lot more now because I have electric wheels. 
With a radio, I might add. Yeah. It's not just a radio. It's not just a radio. <laughs> That's a stereo. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's just, without them I probably wouldn't be able to do things I'm doing now. Uh, this photo is obviously taken at the Jerry Lewis telethon. Uh, that's Mark uh, stooping down on the left and uh, Susan McGowan uh, with the microphone pot in the center. Um, in the next following clip, uh, my mother uh, gives her perspective about Todd and, and the Muscular Dystrophy Association, which the Jerry Lewis Telethon is the uh, main fundraiser for. Well, Todd was four and a half when I finally had the sense to go to a doctor and say something's wrong with this kid and I don't like it. Yeah. Uh, and he, his comment to me was, uh, he had called in his partner, and the two of them examined Todd together, and that's when I realized something was going on. And he looked at me and said, uh, what we're talking about is muscular dystrophy. Do you know anything about it? And I said, yeah, it's incurable. And he said, that's right. And that's all that doctor told me. <laughs> I walked out of the office in a daze. I was in a vacuum. Uh, I think you could have popped a balloon within a foot of me and I would not have heard it. We did not realize at first that there were the helps available. Mm -hmm. uh, the Muscular Dystrophy Association has just been terrific to us. We've, I think there, I don't know of anything we've requested that we've been turned down on. Maybe we've just requested the right things, but uh, his manual wheelchairs, he had two of those provided by the association. Uh, he had an electric wheelchair before the one he has now, which had been an old one given to us by a neighbor, and they had it refurbished for him. And then the new wheelchair he has, uh, camps, um, just all kinds of things that we have been able to get through the association and to say nothing of the support that we've had from them uh, psychologically and so on, emotionally. Um, I don't think most people know, looking at a, a child with neuromuscular disease, how degenerative it is for a child who's uh, not only his muscles have wasted, but his tendons have drawn up. His, his legs are permanently bent. His back is crooked. His spine is crooked. But there's a whole range of activities that child can't pay, do, and you have to provide that help for him. And uh, it's very time consuming. I think on the whole he feels pretty good by himself. I think he's, uh, he knows he's loved and uh, that uh, many people love him and care for him. I think that uh, he, has, um, he has moments when he gets very angry uh, because he can't do something. And uh, something as simple as lifting a glass to his mouth. Uh, he, he gets very angry sometimes at himself. But on the whole, I think he thinks Todd Locke's okay. <laughs> Last comment on tape, right? Yeah. Right. Well, Todd, how's the, how are the women down here? What's the situation? They're great. <laughs> find any nice looking ones you want to take home? Mm-hmm. A whole bunch of them. <laughs> Well, uh, if you could only have your choice of one, which one would you take? It's hard to tell. Well, you got a few more days to uh -huh. kind of scope the situation. Yep. You're having a good time. There's a, you really look forward to coming down here? It's great. Now, this year, you're in a little different situation. You're going to meet some, some new people that you've never been to camp before with. Have you already met some people that you think you, you know, you're going to be uh, maybe writing letters to, that type of thing, looking forward to seeing in the future? Mm-hmm. How tough is it to meet new people for you? It's not that hard. 
What kind of things have you been doing? Arts and crafts, swimming, fishing, let's see, eating. Oh, <laughs> that's your favorite? Yep. We better not talk too much, too loud about the food, though. <laughs> How's the food been? Pretty good. Uh, see, don't ask me that question. Say good. <laughs> uh, I know. I I think I I look forward to camp a lot. Uh, you know why? You know what are some of the activities you look forward to the most? I don't know. Probably crafts, meeting new people. Crafts kind of fun. You mm -hmm. make things. You can be so creative on your own. What kind of things you like to? Are you a doodler? Yeah. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Just try to be creative on your own, that type of thing. Yep. What about uh, coming down here, uh, you know, you look forward to, you've been to, to camp before. Mm -hmm. uh, is it kind of nice to see the same people, you know, year after year, that type of thing? Sort of. Do you have and again, it's nice to meet new ones. Which do you enjoy more? Meeting new ones, I guess. Do you get much of a chance to see the same people, you know, throughout the year that you see at camp? Yeah, once in a while. Yeah. What is, if you could, if you could capsulize it, is there any way maybe you could describe, oh, what having a place like this means to you? I don't know. <laughs> is it, is it pretty important? Yeah, sort of. I guess. Um, is it is would it have to be maybe classified to you since you get a chance to get away from home as one of the highlights of the year? Mm-hmm. I'd say so. <laughs> because of that. Uh -huh. What do you enjoy most about about camp? Is there anything in particular? <laughs> Girls. <laughs> God. This guy.
We'll never forget you, Todd. We love you, and we'll be with you again someday.